Before we actually get into making calculations and calculating probabilities using the central limit theorem, I want to briefly give an overview, a big picture idea of how we're going to use the central limit theorem. So remember that the, re the requirements for the central limit theorem tell us that if we're working with a population that we already know to be normal, or if our sample size is greater than 30, that's great, we can continue. We can use the central limit theorem. And in this course, we're going to use it in two different ways. This week, we're going to focus on calculating probabilities. And not necessarily probabilities, but probabilities associated with obtaining a particular result. So what's the probability of obtaining a sample mean of 30 if I know that the population mean is 28? So those are the types of questions we want to answer. If we're able to calculate probabilities for obtaining a particular value, a particular statistic value, such as a, a mean, then that means we're also going to be able to determine whether or not a sample is, the result of a sample is unusual or not. So are the results unusual? How far is my, my sample mean from the overall mean? That's how we can use the central limit theorem. We're also going to be able to, and this is going to be next week, determine how we can use, if we don't know the population mean. So the first part here, we're assuming we know the population mean. The second part, we don't know the population mean. Can we use what we know about our sample to make inferences about that population mean? So we're going to be creating confidence intervals. But real quick, I just want to provide you with a quick overview of what we're going to do. Suppose we have a population that we know has a mean of 78 and standard deviation of 7. So we can suppose maybe that these are test scores. We know that the statistics... statistics exam score, the mean is 78, and the standard deviation is 7. What if I decided to take two samples? One sample had a, let's say, a sample size of 20, and the other sample, let's say, had a sample size of 100. We can suppose that the population is normally distributed. What would I know about the sampling distribution? So I'm going to draw two bell curves. Let me draw this one first. I know that if this is the sampling distribution, so this is my sampling distribution, if I were to take all possible, excuse me, all possible samples of size 20 and plotted all of those means. So I take one sample, I find the mean, and I plot that. I take another sample of 20, I find the mean, and plot that. So this is my sampling distribution for x bar, for all the means all the sample means of size 20. What I know from previous module pages is that the mean of all the means, which we call mu with a little x bar, mu with an x bar, which is the mean of all the sampling means, will be equal to the population mean, which in this case we know is 78. What we also know given the, per, the definition of the central limit theorem, is that the margin of error, the margin of error is the standard deviation associated with the sampling distribution. The margin of error, which I'll, is the, I'll use the sigma, that's the standard deviation, but it's the standard deviation of the sample means. We can calculate this by taking the sample or excuse me, the standard deviation of the population, 7, and dividing that by the square root of our sample size, in this case, 20. So the standard error here is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. It provides us with a variation. How far apart are all the sample means? So if I were to plug this in here, 7 divided by the square root of 20, what would I get approximately? So I know 7 divided by the square root of 20. I would get approximately 1.57. Approximately 1.57. So if the standard deviation of the population was 7, then I know that if I'm taking sample sizes of size 20, then the distribution of the means, the means are going to have a standard deviation of 1.57. Now, how am I going to use that? Well, what if I get a sample mean of, let's say, I do a sample and my sample mean, let's say, of my first sample was, oh, I don't know, 87. So if 87 is an observation over here, 
I know the mean is 78. I know the standard deviation in, of the sampling distribution, which is 1.57. I can determine, well, what's the probability of getting a sample mean of 87? Just like we calculated probabilities with the normal distribution, I'm going to be using the mean and now the, the standard error to calculate z-scores. Before we end this video, I want to now look at what would happen if, not, if we had a sample size not of 20 but of 100. Well, we do know that it doesn't matter what the sample size is. The sampling distribution, the mean is going to be, so this will be our mean, the mean will always target the population mean. So it doesn't matter that we're working with 100. The sampling distribution of all the means here, this will also be equivalent to the population mean, which is 78. Now what's going to make this sampling distribution different than when we were dealing with the sampling distribution of size or sample size 20 is that our margin of error is going to be different. The standard deviation here, how far apart the means are in this sampling distribution is going to be smaller. It's the margin of error, excuse me, the standard error is going to be a smaller number, which means this bell curve is going to be skinnier. It's going to be a lot closer to the mean. How do I know that? Well, I can calculate the margin. I keep saying the margin of error. I apologize. The standard error. We can take the original populate, or excuse me, the original population standard deviation, which is seven, and we can divide that by the square root of our sample size, which in this case is 100. That's how I find the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. So this would be seven divided by 10. This would be 0.7. So when we were dealing with a sample size of 20, our bell curve of our sampling distribution was a lot more, let's say, quote unquote, wider. It had a larger standard error, where if we were dealing with a sample size of 100, now we still have the same sampling mean, right? The sample mean is, is the sampling distribution mean is still 78, but our, our standard error is smaller, which means our bell curve is a lot skinnier. So I will ask you, if you know the population and you know the sample size, you should be able to draw a picture of the sampling distribution. We know the mean will match the population mean, and we know that the standard error, which is equivalent to the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, that's going to be found by taking the population standard deviation and dividing it by the square root of our sample size. These are essential pieces of information.